so I've had a couple hours for it the batteries to charge up uh, let's see if it goes out here it goes there it goes we got oil pressure do we have oil pressure over here though Oh, there she goes. There she goes. She's going up, but we got oil pressure. We got oil pressure. Yeah! You got like 20 pounds of oil pressure. Okay. I'm going to say this is a good motor. Just by what I've seen so far. We're... That much oil pressure? Ooh, at the cranking? Ooh. You can't complain. All right, we are back with the CV Black Box Synchronization Procedure. It's not very difficult, it's very simple. Um, it's very confusing when you read it. It's really like, what the heck? But once you do it, you see it, you see it done. It's very, very simple. Um, also, I'm going to finish the oil uh, tin for the oil cooler that you guys cannot see, but it's already finished. Finacio, terminado. Anyways, uh, yeah, you, you'll get to see it in the, in the later in the video. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna ahead, go ahead and clock this distributor with the CD Black Box uh, program. Now I need a total of 70 degrees BTC before dead top center. So, that is zero. It only goes up to 40. This is where I think C, uh, CSP screwed up. Anyway, um, I already went ahead and put some tape and made the mark. Now, the way I did that, find out where 70 is. There you go. I did one of these. That's actually 70 right there. So, I just put it. Just did that basically like yay and was able to get to 70 uh, uh, anyways um enough of the silliness okay let's talk about the distributor I'm assuming you guys already took the weights out and uh, put the C clips and the springs back okay just put them back just put them back they're not gonna get in your way just put them back put the springs back if that screw in here if the screw air uh, screw in here actually comes loose uh, you'll still be at zero. You, your your engine will be fine. Um, in other words, it, the weights won't be there to mechanically advance your timing and add it to whatever timing you're running here. You can see how that can be a catastrophic uh, mixture. Take out your weights. Use or take a lot of pictures when you're taking your 009 apart. It's not that difficult. Make uh, uh, sharpie lines so you know exactly how it goes and use your pictures as a reference it's not difficult it's very simple okay do it anyways um, assuming your timing is is what you're you, you already know what the timing is and you're and you want to upgrade to a CB black box okay so don't mess with your timing make your marks and everything where it's supposed to be and start with that put it on TDC uh, number one uh, cylinder and then um, what I like to do is just to make it really simple uh, put a piece of wire with tape to your number one when you're at TDC number one cylinder then rotate your engine so I'm gonna rotate the engine oh that's gonna be fun with one hand <laughs> yeah one hand One hand muscle. And I think I got it. Oh my god. I think I went a little too far. Ah, nope. Now I went too little. Ah. Eh. Close enough for government work. It's like maybe two degrees off. Who cares? Close enough. All I want is to be very close to, uh, to the, uh, 
timing that the CB blocks is going going to use. So then you just turn your distributor back to that wire and you're done. You are literally done uh, when it comes to this procedure. Uh, some CB black boxes, I think I heard they were uh, the uh, timing was actually lowered to about 60, so that would be somewhere right here. And the reason is because these tend to have a kickback, and for whatever reason, um, it's it, it, to me it appears to be voltage related. When the engine spins really slow, you will always get a kickback on the on your first crank. Second crank, you won't get it, or third, or fourth, or fifth. Only on your first crank when you turn the engine over the first time after it's been sitting for several hours it'll do a kickback I don't know why but it does however if your battery is really good and the engine spins fast you'll never ever get a kickback all right let's go ahead and start the car no not I can't start the car I'm just gonna use the timing gun to see when I light up whatever number I have on my CV black box er, yeah on the CV black box computer so now that this is partially already clocked oh, we don't need this anymore so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall distributor cap okay and it's kind of hard to do this with one hand there we go all right, we're plugged in, we're plugged in. This is my pump running. I should have my pump off, fuel pump, because I don't want to make a mess. I'm gonna open. Okay, it's connected. Connecting. Oh God, let's see. Okay, this is my spark plug, spark plug table. I went ahead and highlighted these because I know that this is where it's gonna be uh, 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 vacuuming right now when I crank it. So I want this to resemble to maybe eight degrees. I want this to be eight degrees or 10 degrees. I'm gonna put 10 and I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set the timing over here at 10 degrees using my, my uh, uh, timing gun. So I'm going to be adjusting the distributor as he's cranking uh, 10 degrees. So this is the way I'm going to do it. Okay. So first of all, you highlight what you want to change. You highlight that because that's my vacuum where it's going to be. I know it's going to be there. So you then I put here, I just put 10 and then fill. They all turn into 10s. You hit send, that'll send it to the computer. So now I want, I'm gonna want 10 degrees right here to be flashing at 10 degrees. Boop, 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 boop. Once I get this flashing at 10 degrees, it's gonna be already uh, uh, synchronized. Okay, now that I know that the, the, the timing is gonna be 10 degrees, I'm gonna go ahead and set the blue screen because it's a lot easier to see. Um, I'm gonna close this now the timing is gonna be right here and this oops in this area is gonna be here 10 it's gonna show 10 da, 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 10 10 10 so I'm gonna match it over here 10 I don't need this anymore okay now hopefully this is gonna cooperate and not do funky shit <laughs> hopefully I can show it with the timing thingy let me mark Just so you know where it is, the mark. Okay, now he's gonna crank it and hopefully this is gonna be 10, exactly like this red number or that zero, it should be 10. And once they're 10, they, sh it sh they should be clocked in. Go for it. <laughs> yes, it's exactly 10. See over here, we're at 10. 
Okay, computer and the CB and the distributor is clocked. Turn it off. Okay, so that that's it. You're 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 synchronized. Tighten up your bolt. You're done. Anything you do over here, the timing will change here. So you never have to do the timing gun ever again. You're done. All right. That's how easy it is to do the CB black box synchronization. Okay, so now that oh, this thing is completely um, synchronized, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this thing. So I gotta move, is he? Oh, hell no. All right, okay. And that concludes the CB uh, synchronization. I went ahead and uh, cut this thing that, that originally goes here with the cooler thingy over here. Uh, anyways, what I did is I just cut it. You know, I'm still cutting it still. Yeah, I'm still cutting. I'm going to cut it right there because it's too close to the wall. And then I'm going to make a shell like a little bubble right here. Oops, a little bubble right here with a, a tube. And then just tick, that's it. So this is pretty much what I've got so far for the oil cooler. Check it out. Okay, let me get it over here because it's kind of hard to see. There we go. Uh-huh. So basically, it just goes in like, yeah, like that. And um, I want to make a hole right here or the other pipe so I can blow the air inside of this thing yeah I know it doesn't look pretty right now it'll look okay once it's painted okay so I'm pretty much done with the housing for the oil cooler as you can see yeah, you can see a little bit of the oil cooler how's it gonna stay there without moving actually let's see if I can get the angle there right there okay you can barely see the bolts. Actually, I'm gonna make a hole right here, hole right there, and a bolt, and a bolt. That's gonna hold it right there without, so it doesn't move. Now, how how is this ever gonna seal? You say, and you say, how in the world is that ever going to seal? Right, okay. There's actually a very simple answer to that. Let me get this out. Let me get over here because of the glare. Glare is horrible out there. The way my garage is set, the sun hits it in the evening. Ah. Um, so I'm still using the seal. Uh, the basic doodad that went in the regular T4. So I just cut everything that I didn't need and I made my own housing again. There you go. See, it doesn't look like shit, but you're never going to be able to see that. Plus, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grind it down and paint it. And uh, I'm probably going to putty it so it doesn't look too bad. Um, it's going it, to it's gonna be cool. So basically, these forks, these two forks, slide between the cylinder. Here's the cylinder, more or less. Or the uh, CSP shell right here. And thunk. That's pretty much it. So we're almost done with the, the thing for the cooler, for the air. Uh, I found this corner piece and it's got a dent on it. I'm debating if, if I should use it because it looks kind of uh, or I should just bundle it because that is very thick metal. There's no way I'm going to be, be able to pull it out. Um, yeah, anyways, that's the whole idea. One of these and then I've got a uh, turbo silicone pipey thingy that I'm going to use to, you know, to join it over there to the to the cooler okay i gotta make that hole real quick because uh i'm losing time, time uh, the sun is going down and i, I want to finish this today it's almost done um that's test fitting everything everything's perfect i'm just gonna bundle that don't worry about that you won't be able to see that later on uh i need to weld it so i'm gonna go ahead and weld it but first i'm gonna mark it and then cut the the the, the same shape to this so that it doesn't get you know get in the way because right now it's like that far off from uh, the oil cooler so I'm just gonna mark it and basically with some bondo here and here's my uh, my silicone boot 
there you go. See, it works. It the works. So that's gonna be fine. So I've got it all cut on the inside, all that good stuff. So I'm just gonna tack weld it together and have my son weld it tomorrow. Um, One moss on this side, and that should do it for it, for it to stay. Perfect. All right. Air cooler for the oil cooler done. Just have my son weld it tomorrow. It's done. All right. Now I need to make the little. Thing gappy thingy so we don't suck air hot air from the bottom and there you go just finished it that's the way it looks now that I just freshly painted I still need to put a bolt there and a bolt there just to keep it in place from rattling or whatever the hell uh, remember it does have a seal a complete seal rubber seal underneath the the whole assembly so I'm not gonna be leaking any air anywhere uh, same thing right here I am running this uh, silicone boot that it that we usually normally use on the uh, GTI Turbo. Happened to be the exact same size. There you go. So that was an easy, it's an easy takeoff. You know, I can, it takes me a couple of seconds to just take it off, remove it. Once I remove the bolts down there and just slide that thing over, it comes right off. Perfect. So that is done. And um, yeah, now we just have to make the exhaust system. There you go. That'll be a different video. So, adios muchachos.